What's up guys? So, uh, sitting on the crapper this morning, scrolling through the Weld.com Facebook page, as most of you do while you're on break and you should be working. Not now, Mike. Working on a hot job. There's a couple good conversations in here that I figured would relate to primarily everybody in the group. So I just wanted to kind of respond to some of those, uh, give some feedback, and kind of give some information to everybody that's out there. By the way, if you're not a member of the page, go ahead and uh, hit the request button. We'll go ahead and let you in. Um, but Kelly Bagelhole, or Bigel Holy, I'm not too sure of the pronunciation there. It could be French. Uh, he wants to know who's burning the, uh, the rods down to which point. Uh, he says he's the shorter straw on the left. Sorry about the card you were dealt there, buddy. But it looks like, you know, that, I mean, there's primarily three types of people in the world, you know. You got the people that are buying their own rods. You got the guys that are doing your code work. And then you got the guys that, you know, they don't care. Somebody else is footing the bill for the rods. So just my two cents on that piece, you know, is burning them down this, you know, this far, uh, you know, you're, you're probably going to burn up your insulators a lot. You're going to tear up your equipment. There's no point in doing it. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid to do a restart, uh, which brings me to my next, you know, my next case. If you're burning them down to here, go ahead and chip off that little slag on the bottom and go ahead and do a restart. A lot of people freak out about restarts. Uh, they're not that difficult if you practice them. It's, it's one of the things that kind of separates the, the up and comers from the professionals is you know being able to restart and do good tie-ins and stuff like that. So as much as you guys are practicing how to run a decent bead, you know, grab a handful of stubbies and practice your starts and stops, your restarts, your tie-ins, things like that. It's just gonna make you that much better. Now my recommendation is I typically, if the weld length permits, I burn my rods all the way down to the numbers. Okay, and that's for a good reason. Burning your rods down to the numbers, especially when you're doing code work, whether you're doing ASME, API, D11, this allows the inspector irrefutable evidence that you know, you're using the right electrode classification uh, for the work that you're doing. So you know, if you're doing, if the weld's calling out for a low high, you know, uh, low high code or low hydrogen, uh, the inspector can look at that and say, you know, that sure enough, he's got a handful of or a, a pile full of 7018 stubs there, that's probably what he's using. So when you're out there playing around with your rod in the field, just know when to stop. All right, so a lot of the members in the group are actually welding students, just like Terrence Beck here. It's his first day of TIG and welding school and he wants to know if any tips are welcome. Now, if you guys have any tips you can provide Terrence, go ahead and drop them in the comments section for him and help him out, right? We were all new at one point, so any information you can give him from years of experience is, is gonna make him that much better as a welder. Uh, so the first thing I would say, relax. A lot of people tend to choke up on that TIG torch um, and they can't move as fluid. You want to maintain a, a slow steady speed throughout the joint, make it consistent and uniform. The next thing is uh, you're going to contaminate, right? I've been, I've been welding for a while and I still contaminate. Um, you know, try to prevent that, but it's going to happen. When that does, don't be afraid to stop, resharpen your tungsten and get back into the puddle. Uh, if you leave it contaminated, your art characteristics are going to be completely different and you're never going to get consistent results that way. Um, the next thing, go through your machine, you know, make sure you've got the correct polarity set up, you know, whether you're doing AC uh, or DC for aluminum and steel applications, make sure you've got your right polarity set up, uh, get a good matching amperage, check the diameter of your tungsten, uh, make sure those coincide with the diameter of your collet, your diffuser, make sure you're using the correct cup. Now there's a lot of resources online that are completely free to download. If you can get on the Amazon, you can order some of the TIG calculators. They're just going to make you that much better in determining what size tungsten uh, and size cup and everything, type of gas, flow rates, all that, all that stuff's in there is great information, but it has everything you need to know in there as far as getting the right you know, setup and configuration for the type of material you can be working on. I would start there. Uh, it's also you know, good stuff to have, you know, be able to reference back to. But the biggest thing is get comfortable with what you're doing. I uh, imagine you're going to start off with a lot of T-joints and lap joints. What I typically tell my students is just kind of rest your hand on the table. I put three fingers on the table. Um, that way I can slide across that joint in a nice fluid motion. And you can kind of maintain that, that arc gap or arc length with your, the end of your tungsten in your puddle. Um, but other than that, just you know, relax, get comfortable. Uh, sit down if you can, you know, just to, in the early stages to kind of develop that muscle memory and, and enhance that technique. So guys, if you have any tips you can provide Terrence, go ahead and drop them in the comments section on here. Terrence, please keep us posted with your progress. 
Send us some pictures of, uh, of what you're doing in school. Maybe we can help out a little bit more in depth and uh, keep you on the right track. All right, guys, so on a similar note, we have Gary Joseph De Silva, and he says, hey, guys, I'm starting technical school in August for welding. I was wondering if you had any tips for a first timer starting out. Anything helps. Thanks, guys. Uh, Gary, I mean, the, the best thing I can tell you and what I tell my students when they come in first day of class, spend as much time as you can in that booth. The biggest thing you can do for yourself, the best thing you can do for yourself is hood time, burning rods over and over and over. Learn the muscle memory, the technique, the positioning. Be the first one into class, be the last one out. Um, you know, if you're outside of class, write questions down so that when you see your instructor the next time, you can ask him those questions. Also, uh, I've seen a lot of people, you know, looks like you're already enrolled, but do some research on the school that you're gonna go to. Go in there and see if you can meet with the, the instructor. That's gonna be the best person to talk to. A lot of, I know a lot of schools now, they have recruiters. Um, nine times out of 10, the recruiters don't know anything about welding. So try to talk to the instructor, ask them the questions, find out what you're gonna be learning in class. Um, you know, just, just simple things like that. Make sure, you know, your goals are aligned with what they're gonna teach. Uh, you know, if you're going in there to learn pipe welding specifically and they don't teach a pipe welding program, maybe that's not the school for you. Um, you know, just, just go in there with a, a good mindset. Welding is difficult, so, you know, leave your feelings at the house. Come in, uh, you know, fresh. It's going to be stressful in the, in the beginning. So, you know, try to, try to keep that in mind, not to get overly stressed out. Um, it's a difficult skill set to learn, right? So, I mean, the best thing you can do is go in there cool, calm, collective and you know just spend as much time as you can in the booth if the school's open and they offer additional time in the evenings or the afternoons or you know weekends or you know days that you aren't scheduled for class take advantage of that you know if they're going to allow you to come in there and put in extra time get as much extra time as you can it's not going to hurt it's only going to be more beneficial to you so you know just keep that in mind hood time stick time burn as many rods as you can challenge yourself to burn more than the you know the day you did before and like I told my students, and like I usually close my weld or my videos out with, make every weld better than your last, right? So analyze each weld that you're doing, find out what you did right, transfer that into the next weld, uh, remember what you did wrong, and try to prevent that. You know, I tell my students run at least three beads before you make any changes. That way, you can tell yourself you you've got a consistent discontinuity that you need to address, or you're getting consistent good results that you need to you know transfer those that um, methodology into the next uh, weld. So again, Gary, keep us posted, you know, as you get into different positions and processes, you know, throw some additional pictures up on the group. We'd love to help you out. If you got any questions, you can always uh, send us a message or, you know, drop something in the comments and we'd, we'd love to help you out further. Frank Shannon Donatus, uh, he's going through some paces with the Rebel 215 uh, EMP. It's a good running machine. He's running on SMIG, which is smart MIG for those of you who don't know. Uh, he's going to do some cutting etches on his pieces, wants to see how they stack up. Says the machine's pretty smooth. Uh, he's going to post some results later. He's on 10 gauge material. Well, Frank, it looks like you've got uh, a decent weld profile there. SMIG is a great benefit, a uh, great option on the Rebel. Uh, we use it quite a bit here in the shop, you know, if we're just going through something, we don't have time to, you know, go through the, the regular settings or, you know, just got to get a job done really quick. Uh, it's a great option. It kind of helps out new welders you know that don't know their parameters and settings and they need to be running one thing i would mention is that you know take some time learn about you know the different amperages for material thicknesses uh, and learn how to set your wire feed speed and voltage i'm not sure if you're just doing this in the garage or if you're looking for employment as a welder but a lot of machines don't have that option unfortunately so you you kind of have to learn you know your your own parameters as far as wire feed speed and voltage and stuff like that and then learn what each one does so more wire feed speed is, is typically, it's gonna give you more amperage. Voltage is going, uh, going to adjust the width of your puddle and your arc length, right? So the more voltage you give it, shorter arc length you're gonna end up having in a wider uh, puddle. More wire feed speed, that's just gonna turn your heat up basically. So learn the difference between those two. You do have to have the appropriate voltage for the wire feed speed that you're gonna run. Uh, so, I mean, kind of learn the differences in those and then post up any additional questions you have in the comment section. You can tag us in those or, you know, create a new post on here. We'd love to help you out. All right. Looks like Jacob McBride is doing a fillet weld. He's using uh, what looks to be gas metal arc welding and wants to know how to maintain a steady speed. First things first, 
uh, I would recommend stability. So ABCs of welding, always be comfortable. I say this a lot. Try to have three points of contact. You, and you can also use like a, a heat shield or as a backing to kind of keep you from uh, creating too much friction on the table so you got a nice smooth transition across the joint. Watch the size of your puddle. That's going to tell you how fast you, you actually need to travel. So once you pull the trigger, you're going to get about a 5 16 you know, puddle. But it looks like you got 3 16 material. That's just a guess. I don't have a lot of information to go off of. But um, you, know, you get your desired puzzle, puddle size. We'll just put it that way. Once you get that desired puddle size, go ahead and just start moving down the joint and maintain that puddle size. If you start going too slow, that puddle is going to get wider. If you start going too fast, it's going to get narrower. That visual cue should basically tell you how fast you're supposed to be going and then just use those techniques as far as you know stability and keeping your eye on the puddle to, to show you how fast you need to go through that joint. Next person, TJ Cross, he wants uh, some tips on cutting. So it looks like he's using some eighth inch or three sixteenths material and he's cutting through. It looks like his cut's a little rough, uh, a little too much heat input. First thing I would say, TJ, before I cut anything, I check out the thickness of the material that I'm going to be cutting and then I select the appropriate size tip. If your tip is too large for the cutting application, uh, you're not going to get good clean results, right? You want to, the, the optimal thing to do with cutting is to spend less time grinding. So the better your cut's going to be, less time you got to be, you know, you're going to be behind that wheel. So select the appropriate tip size for eighth inch to three sixteenths. I would recommend a triple lot to a double lot tip. Um, you can also find the appropriate settings for that. Uh, I know Victor makes some charts uh, and that's just going to match your thickness of your material up to the cutting tip that you should be using as well as the appropriate oxygen and acetylene levels. So for this application I'd probably use a triple lot tip, uh, 5 to 7 psi of acetylene and about 20 to 25 uh, on your oxygen. Now when you're cutting through there, as soon as you lance through and make that pierce, you get it up to a, a kindling temperature, meaning it turns to that orange, nice orange color that you're looking for before you start cutting. Hit that lever, and when you go into it, go all the way in, right? Don't just ease into the, the, uh, the trigger on the back, you know, I mean, hammer that thing, release it all the way down. That way you're going to get the appropriate amount of oxygen. Now when you're cutting, as long as you have material coming out the back end, you're cutting fast enough. Just watch your cut speed. Uh, a lot of people tend to go way too slow with OxyFuel. Uh, it cuts a lot faster than most people are actually, you know, aware of. So, you know, hit that lever, go through it. Uh, as long as you got material coming out the back end, you know, you're making a decent cut and just watch as you're going through. Very similar to welding, you know, watch, just watch that size of your opening and just keep pushing forward. Thin material like this, I recommend probably a 10 to 15 degree travel angle as you're pushing that material out of the way. Because it is thinner, that's going to get a lot of the material out of the way. It's going to prevent a lot of that dross from building up. So I hope that helps. Guys, if you have any other tips and tricks for them, you know, go ahead and leave it in the comments section. Uh, in, uh, in that question on the Facebook page. So I know this isn't our regular format of video, but we're trying something different. We want to interact with the fans and the viewers on a more one-on-one -on -one level. So if you guys like the video, go ahead, please comment below, and we'll, you know, we'll try to make more videos like this. Uh, if you didn't like it, if it's not your cup of tea, but you found it interesting, you know, please let us know that too. If you didn't like it altogether, uh, let us know that as well. You know, we want to try to make sure we're putting out content you know, that's good for the viewers that you guys are going to want to see and participate and interact with. So until next time, make every world better than your last.